What's going on guys and welcome to Drop Top Performance. If this is your first time watching, um, this is going to be an introduction to HP tuners. Now, I've been doing the YouTube channel for about a year and a half, two years now. Um, I, I'm now doing it pretty consistently now that I'm back in the States. And I've had several people approach me uh, via social media and even some in person about possibly talking about HP tuners and the basics of Dodge tuning. Um, which, well, here we are. This is what we're doing. I've been kind of pushing this off for a very long time. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um, although I've been tuning for about three or four years now, I am a novice. I am not a professional tuner. Anything and everything that you take from these videos, I, I just want you to know that, you know, this has been trial and error for myself. It may not be what works for this car, may not work for your car, and vice versa. So I, I just want you to take everything that I say with a grain of salt. Um, I'm gonna do a disclosure real quick. Um, just to protect myself and uh, let you know what you're getting yourself into um, because like I said guys I am NOT a professional tuner this is a hobby of mine I've had pretty good luck with it um, but I definitely do not consider myself a professional tuner if you guys have issues feel free to contact me um, I have my Instagram and then I also have the Facebook page Instagram is drop top garage and then Facebook page is drop top performance just like the YouTube channel but uh, let's get into this disclosure real quick and uh, we can get this video started disclaimer time I am NOT a professional tuner please take everything with a grain of salt now let's learn together and grow as a community Welcome back. So now that we got the disclosure out of the way, let's get this thing started. So, um, like I said, I, I have been tuning for a little while. Um, I am not a professional, by no means. I'm gonna get some coffee real quick. I'm by no means a professional tuner at all. However, I, I do have a general knowledge on different parameters, what needs to be done, uh, so on and so forth and I'm hoping that if anything comes out of this you guys can learn a little bit something so We're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and go down into the corner and bring up the HP tuners All right, so what you're looking at here is this is the HP tuners VCM editor. This is where you're gonna do all your work um, It's pretty self-explanatory as you see right now guys. I don't have any file up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my file, I'm going to go to open, and then I'm going to, this is my wife's Dodge Charger, so just for instance, I'm going to go into and look at the stock tune. So I'm going to pull it up. First thing it's going to, it always goes to the last thing you looked at. So the last time I was on here, I was looking at idle airflow. So let's look at general. So uh, a little bit about HP tuners. This is the same exact um, platform that professional tuners use. Anyone who, you, who tunes a vehicle uses this. Some use Diablo Sport, some use you know EFI Live, but they're all different. This by far is the less, uh, it's, it's the best one that I have found that I have personally used. I don't particularly care for Diablo. Um, I think that HP Tuners just has a lot more options. So let's get into it. General, this is a 5.7 liter V8 Hemi. Engine size, displacement. If you were to um, swap a 6.4, you would come in here, you would say, hey, this is a 6.4 liter displacement, 6.4. Um, pretty self-explanatory. And then you got your idle stuff. Um, start with general. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here guys that you really don't have to worry about. Um, the biggest thing with tuning is um, understanding how EFI works, how uh, electronic fuel injection engine works. And one of the best tools that you guys can go get is uh, if you, if you want to start learning, it's like $26 on Amazon and that is, I'll get it for you, engine management advanced tuning just because it says advanced tuning does not mean that it is 
the most advantage. You have to do basic whatever. This stuff is awesome. I, I, I really, really, um, if you're wanting to get into tuning, this is this is what I would say the first step would be. It's $26 compared to most of these classes, um, which by the way, the classes are great, don't get me wrong, but you need to understand how an engine works before you get into it. Uh, this is a guy named Greg Banish. He is a Ford um, calibrator, I believe, maybe GM calibrator. He's a calibrator. Um, a calibrator is the guy who, from the factory, sets the set parameters for all, all vehicles. So he does a lot of research and development, what works specific for this vehicle this year, and then so on and so forth. A tuner is somebody who goes in after the calibrator and then fine tunes the vehicle for that specific area where, you know, altitude's an issue, um, temperature could be an inch issue, uh, the amount of dirt in the air, so like if you're in this desert, you know, and stuff like that. We kind of pull out more um, from the factory than what's, you know, there's there's a lot left on the on the table from the factory. He does both, and he wrote a book about it, and it's awesome. It's it's a good read. If you're like me and need pictures and stuff to understand, it's got all of that. Uh, and it, I mean, this this book alone has helped me uh, understand. And once you understand how an EFI engine works, everything else is just kind of plug and play at that point. So let's go ahead and get back to HP tuners and uh, so I can show you around a little bit. So we're back into idle, this is RPM stuff. Um, not a whole lot here. Uh, airflow, you know, uh, you'll start getting more into this with the uh, cammed applications. Uh, airflow, you got your general, you got your speed density, which is a huge thing, um, especially with these Dodges, guys. Dodge, <laughs> they, to, to, to tune and want to tune a Dodge, you have to um, kind of enjoy punishment a little bit. They use artificial neural network, and then you gotta switch it, and then you have to come into your VE tables and completely reconstruct your, um, your VE tables. If, you're, if you have any experience at all, you look at this VE table, VE table you kinda get like, ugh, a little bit, because the whole thing is just disgusting, and it will not run. If, if you switch it from artificial neural network and go straight into using these V1, V2 banks, it is not gonna run, I can promise you. So uh, we'll get into this at a later date, um, talk about artificial neural network and also um, speed density and stuff like that and when you need it, when you don't need it and how to correct it. Uh, electric throttle, I mean, that's it, it's you could use it. Uh, we'll go over that as well. Um, and then charge motion device, don't need that. Variable camshafts, yes. The camshaft in the uh, Hemi's are on a phaser and they, excuse me, they use VVT, which is variable vibe ti valve timing, um, which is like VTEC. So we'll talk about how to do that, um, how to, so for instance, my car has a stock cam. However, I have it adjusted to kind of mediate the power to where it's not uh, so jerky. It's real smooth coming into the transition. And uh, if you do a, uh, an aftermarket camshaft and you get the non-VVT, then we'll show you how to tune that later on down the road as well. Neural network, this is what I was talking about earlier, guys. Um, realistically, you really don't have to worry about any of this. Right now, you can see that it is enabled. Now, when we go to tune speed density or VE tuning, you would disable this and start creating and adjusting your VE tables from there. Exhaust. Really nothing to worry about. Fuel is a huge one, guys. This is this is where, you know, half, this is spark and fuel, meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes, yeah, meat and potatoes is, is the stuff that is very important, you know. So uh, let's look, uh, you got your injection pulse width. This is something that you have to worry about. Um, and stuff like that. There's a lot of things on here that really aren't too important. O2 uh, sensors, if you want to disable them. I don't, 
They're there for a reason. I like to use them. Open loop, um, we'll get into open loop at a later date. Power enrichment, this is a very important one. Um, power enrichment air charts. So with GM, it's a little different as far as how to control your AFRs. This, like I said earlier guys, Dodge is very, um, they would like to be different. Like not just their cars with the Hellcat and, and all these crazy things, their tuning is very tedious and can kind of be a pain in the butt. This is how you control your AFR. You might be like, well, Cody, what's the deal? Why is it 0.0112 instead of 14.7, uh, you know, AFR? Well, like I said, Dodge is a little different. And instead of using air fuel ratio, like everyone else in the world, they use fuel air ratio. And then you have to do um, some a little bit of math to get that figured out, which we will do in a later video but right now, this is just bare bones stuff. Uh, this is your fuel enrichment. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'll show you how to correct that in a later date. You're gonna hear a lot of that because I don't want to flood you with so much information that it gets confusing because tuning is a very um, tedious job. It's, it can be a little scary and, you know, I don't wanna sound bad, but you do the wrong thing once, you could destroy your engine. So you have to be careful. Uh, this is RPM stuff. This is something that Dodge also does. So for instance, park neutral. You, you know, you're sitting at a, a Wendy's parking lot. I like Wendy's. You're sitting at a Wendy's parking lot and you see this hot lady driving around in her stock Dodge Charger and you want to show off a little bit. And you're in neutral and you go to hit the, the gas and rev it as high as you can and it only stops at 3800 RPM. That's why. They have it limited so people aren't blowing up their stuff and bringing it in for warranty because I think they did that knowing that the MDS sucks and is flattening, it's gonna flatten out cams and you know, well, here we are. Everybody and your mom has a messed up camshaft because Dodge didn't wanna do it. MDS, multi-displacement system, y'all know about that. Um, we'll go into how to disable this at a later date as well. Transit. I, I don't really mess with it, um, with Dodge anyways. I'm sure there's some professional tuners that probably use way more stuff than I do. I don't because I don't know what it is. Um, which is a cool thing about HP tuners, if you don't ever feel comfortable with just clicking on something you don't really know, they have forms, so many forms with just plenty of answers, tunes and, and just stuff to pull from and, and whatnot. And then you get into stuff like compare files, which I'll go in on a later date and talk about that because that is such a huge, such a useful tool uh, to use and, and really, really is, is it will help you out. It, it's helped me out quite a bit, um, fix people's tunes because I've had some sent to me that are just absolutely awful uh, and had to use a stock compare file to pull in the new file or to pull in the new tune to walk it back in because it was so far right that it was just, wasn't even where close. Uh, now we're in the Spark, this is all very important stuff. Um, spark for Dodge is, is crazy. Um, with GM stuff you have a high octane base and then a low octane base. That's it for Spark Table. That is not the case when it comes to Dodge. They have, um, <laughs> They have a part throttle base, they have base alcohol, they have watt base, they have watt VVT lock pin, they have watt thermal base, just so many spark tables that you have to go through. So let's take a look at, at base and, and see how, how it works. So um, air charge is pretty much how much work the engine's doing. How much air is in the cylinder. Um, a little bit different than GM. I'm going to say that a lot because Dodge, GM, and Ford all are different in uh, how it operates. But anyways, so this is 90% charged. Your cylinder wall is charged, and then if you're in at seven 700 RPMs, you're, you're you're in a bad place. Anyways, usually you're going to be about if you're that high up, you're going to be about 3,000 RPMs on, and this is your degrees of timing. So at 70% air charge, at 
3,040 RPMs, you are at 15.5 spark advance. That's the base. You see how it goes from 0.08 air charge to 0.90% air charge. Let's look at watt, which is wide open throttle. It starts at 0.35 and ends at 0.90. This is all your watt stuff. This is all your wide open throttle, get on it, stop like to stop like, or at the track, or in Mexico, you know what I'm saying? So, these are things we're gonna go into. Um, some other stuff. These cars love the spark knock. So, uh, like transit stuff's gonna be important, tip in, um, because they're, they're loud, the valve train's loud, the injectors are loud, and we'll go into the knock sensors. They're super sensitive. I mean like super sensitive. They pick up everything, which it's okay to uh, desensitize them on certain, uh, sorry, I got a phone call, on certain incidences. But uh, for now, we're, we're just gonna skim over that a little bit and uh, talk about what a knock sensor is. So you have knock sensors. They are sensors that pick up knock. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. But what knock is, is detonation in the engine. Say you're running too lean, you're running too hot, and you have pre-ignition because of hot spots on the pistons, and as your piston's coming up, you get too much spark, it's gonna rattle, and it's fighting the piston to come up, and it's smacking the inside of the cylinder wall, and just causing lots and lots of damage, that is spark. You don't want spark. Spark will send a piston into pieces all over because from stock, Dodge uses hyperutectic pistons, which are very fragile. You can hit them, like, they're strong, but they're fragile at the same time. Um, you smack them too hard and they're just going to just turn into dust pretty much. Torque module, uh, I don't really mess with it um, personally. Torque management's a big one. This is something that definitely will be addressed later on. This is, uh, for instance, you ever sit at a stoplight and you punch the gas and it just, that's torque management. Uh, what it's doing is it's trying to keep you from breaking the tires loose and possibly crashing like a Mustang. So, uh, this is something that will be adjusted for sure on every tune, and uh, we'll talk about that on a later date. It's really not too hard. That is it for the engine. Now, there's transmission stuff we need to talk about. Um, so, we'll get into engine diag real quick before we get into transmission. Say you have a check engine light come on. After tuning your vehicle, especially with long tubes, anything to do with uh, temperature or circuits being changed or it's not reading the correct airflow anymore, you're going to have to come in here. You're going to throw a check engine light. It's just going to happen. doesn't mean your engine's messed up. It just means that from the factory, the calibrator, like Greg Banish, who has set up these certain parameters, now the engine and ECU is like, hey, these certain parameters are no longer being met. So what you do is you come in here and then you adjust accordingly. So if you were to um, change your airflow, I'm trying to for I'm trying to look at uh, engine coolant temperature, right? Low circuit. So this is a big one. If you ever switch to a uh, 180 thermostat or anything different from stock, you're gonna throw this code. It's gonna be one. It's gonna be either P zero one eleven through P zero um, one eighteen. All right, you're gonna come in here. You're gonna click these. Boom, boom. Enable, and then you're gonna save that file, which will go uh, over how to save a file hole here at a later date. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll load that file back in. Boom. Check engine light's gone. It'll never come back and now your car will run the way you want it. Transmission stuff, I suck at. Um, it's not that I suck at them, I just never, I've never really tuned a Dodge transmission. Um, the Nag 1 isn't too difficult. 
Uh, I've never touched an 8-speed, so ugh, we'll be learning together on that. Uh, this is all your general information, um, you know, TCM, RPM limit. This is your gear ratios. You're not going to be changing any of this. Uh, manual, um, paddle shifters type stuff. Shift general, you know, you got your shift scheduling. Um, it's broken down into normal performance and then winter. I'm in Florida, I ain't got to worry about that. Shift pressures, that's pretty important. Shift timing, that's pretty important. Um, torque converter stuff, if you go to change a big converter into a different converter because you got a big cam, you're gonna have to play around with this. Uh, I try to stick with cams where I don't have to mess around with the torque converter on a street application. That is a tuning, tuning diagnostic. Same thing as the um, stuff for all of your uh, check engine lights. Fuel system. I do not mess with it because you don't have to. It's just your fuel capacity and, and stuff like that. Systems. This is the important stuff. Let's talk about it. Well, I mean, it's all important, but this is this is some overlooked stuff that could happen. Um, mainly the fans. Um, you got all your fan information. So from the factory, Dodge has a 203 degree thermos or thermostat, yeah, thermostat in these vehicles. That is so hot. The reason they do that is for efficiency and um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Not just fuel economy, but emissions. Emissions, boom, there you go. So your first, your first temperature or your first fan that comes on with your AC off is 217 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy crap, that's hot, okay? Your high speed fan doesn't come on until 226 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter. The, the hotter your coolant is, the hotter your oil is. The hotter your oil is, the hotter the ambient temperature is, which is gonna raise the intake air temps, which is just gonna kill power. Um, so, these things really benefit from thermostat changes and a tune because they're just so daggum hot. AC stuff, I, I don't worry about it. All wheel drive, if you want to disable your all wheel drive, this goes out to you, Dave, and uh, uh, Steve, and, and all the boys and gals with all wheel drive chargers. If you want to disable it, there you go, there it is. Um, communications, I, I've never really messed with it, I don't know. Speedo, this is what a lot of people like to go do and change their uh, speedo. This is the governor or whatever. I had a guy roll past me uh, just a couple days ago and actually a really clean Magnum. And he was like, hey man, you got your governor turned off? And I was like, yeah brother, I got a tune, man. And he was, I'm not saying he was redneck, but he was a little country. And uh, he was like, he was just so thrilled about that daggum, uh, um, limiter being taken off it was just a, it was funny man it was just real funny but uh that is it for hp tuners as far as an introduction i know it didn't go too far into how everything operates and, and all that good stuff i promise you we will go over that but right now guys this is just an introduction i don't want to fill you with so much information that it it kind of becomes a little uh scary or you might get a little worried about it um it's okay to be um, cautious about tuning your car. This is a serious, serious thing. If you accidentally put the wrong information in, you could potentially destroy your engine. Um, so this is, this is a big learning curve for a lot of people. It was for me. Some people get it very quickly. Um, I feel like going through the tuning school and just being, having the uh, cojones to just plug into my vehicle and be like, you know what, screw it. If I blow it up, I blow it up. And just learning and, and tuning and, and and just trial and error, trial and error, trial and error really helped me out. Don't be afraid to do this because I always tell people the biggest plunge on working your own vehicle is just picking up that tool and going at it. All HP tuners is is a tool, guys. So uh, if you have any questions or you want to see more stuff please let me know down in the comments below because the more feedback I get from you, the, the more information that I can provide that I know. 
Don't be afraid to message me on Facebook. Don't be afraid to message me on Instagram. And don't be afraid to like, comment, and share this video. Um, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers and I think that is awesome. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been around and put up with my uh, inconsistent, inconsistent, inconsistent video making and all of that good stuff. But thanks for watching guys and as always, I'll check you later.